Could you benefit from building supreme confidence? What would change for you if you played your best when under pressure? What's it costing you to not have the confidence, the poise, and skill to execute when your team needs you most? I've created an exclusive training video designed just for you. I outline the three critical keys to building unshakable supreme confidence and dominating under pressure. You'll also find out how you can apply these to your career today so that you can start to speed up your results and follow a predictable system to get you to your goals. Go to omnityou.com forward slash dominate under pressure. You can go ahead and access that free training in less than two minutes. You'll be learning exactly what I teach my high performance professional athletes and clients about what it takes to dominate. Again, I'm not you.com forward slash dominate under pressure. If you try to get right, then you listen to my dad. <laughs> He's a beast. And if you don't want to listen to him, okay, okay. You don't want to, you don't want to get successful. If you ain't trying to dominate, man, then go listen to something else. Welcome athletes, top performers, and all those looking to gain that killer instinct that edge you need to dominate in any environment. This is the Sports Motivation Podcast, and I'm your host, Nee Shobo. I played ball and succeeded at the highest levels, and I'm now committed to showing you how you can accomplish the ambitious goals and visions that you have. This podcast is designed to teach you high-level strategy, not just fluff and hype. This will cut to the core if you let it, and by taking action on the practical, and next level advice I share, you will see results. Expect that. Expect to be more confident. Expect to be more focused. Expect to be more decisive. And expect to be more fearless. Expect to become the leader your vision needs you to become. So listen up. Take notes. Let's get to it. Welcome to the Sports Motivation Podcast. It's your host, Nii Shobo. I'm super excited. It's a beautiful day here in the Northwest. Before we get into this episode, which I'm super excited about today, I want to send a shout out to two people, all right? Two people, Sonny Sandmeyer and Amanda Rego. Amanda Rego, I just want to let you know I got your email and I will be dropping an episode on the topic you discussed there. So I appreciate you sending that thorough email. It was a lot that you discussed there, and I appreciate it. And shout out to Sonny Sandmeyer. I don't know, you know what sports you play. It was a very short email I got, but he gave me a breakdown of his goals, and I appreciated that. All right, I get a lot of emails. I wanted to send a shout out to those two specific people because those really stood out. If you are wanting to let me know of your progress, you know, uh, I read every email. Um, I don't respond to every email, but I do read my email. And so I always love and I appreciate getting feedback from you all. Let me know how things are going, how the podcast is changing your life, how you're applying it and things like that. All right. So if you want to do that, go ahead and email me, niyi.sobo at gmail.com. Yo, so look, today is going to be the first of four episodes that I'm going to drop back to back to back. All right. So over the next four episodes, you guys will expect you should or you can expect to get parts one through four of this series. And this is going to be all about mental conditioning, all right? Now, I can imagine where you're at right now, um, listening to this episode, the stage of your of life that you're in. Um, maybe you are an athlete, maybe you're not. There's a lot of people who are not athletes who listen to this show, whether you're an entrepreneur, stay-at-home mom, you know, work at a regular job, whatever it is that you do. But if you're the type of person listening to podcasts, reading books, then you're probably a lot like me in that when you first start out, there's a lot of terms, a lot of things that are thrown out. And many times you feel like you're not sure if you're doing the right thing, right? It's like, am I doing this right? Is there something that I'm missing? Um, I could remember very vividly as an athlete, especially even while I was in the NFL, I struggle with that. I'm like, dude, am I doing this right? I'm looking at other people on the team like, what are they over there eating? What type of supplements are they taking? You know, what do they do in the off season? Um, And it always helped me out a lot when people were able to show me what it is that they were doing. Um, And, you know, you graduate, you get to the point where you start to feel more confident and sure about yourself in terms of what your process looks like. But to avoid those feelings of anxiety and not, you know, knowing if you're doing it right, 
I'm not going to say you can avoid that. It's it's kind of like a stage you have to go through. So my my goal is to get you through that a, a big part of that phase. And that's this whole ambiguity that we have around mental training, mental conditioning. We hear this a lot, right? There's a lot of gurus out there, a lot of sports psychologists, a lot of people saying you got to focus on the mindset. It's almost like it's this trendy thing going around, but it's one of those things that very rarely do people ever describe what this is. Like, what is mental toughness? What does it mean to condition yourself mentally? I know how to take myself to the gym and work out, but what in the world does it mean to work out my mind, quote unquote, right? And how does that even have any effect on what I do on the field? Now, hopefully, you're not one of those people who hasn't bought into the idea that your beliefs or your mindset dramatically affects your results. But if you are, let me quickly lay out the sequence or the strategy that we all use in order to get results, whether we're conscious of it or not. And that's this. We all want results, right? The end product. We all want to win. We want to be strong. We want to, you know, succeed, whatever that means. We know that actions lead to that, right? No one would argue with that. We are not yet at the place as, as human beings. We're not that spiritually enlightened to make results show up without actions. We must take action. However, what determines what type of action you take? Whether or not you even do what it is that you need to do. How many times you've had a workout routine and you haven't done it? How many times you've had a workout you know, routine and you haven't done it at the intensity that you need to? How many times because of your mental rigidity have you missed out on a workout that you should be doing, a training routine, getting a coach? How many times, it's funny, you know, uh, I have people apply for my, my coaching program. And every once in a while, there's, or there's people who I actually really believe that I can help that don't follow through. What prevents that? They didn't take the action that could have helped them get the results. Well, why didn't they do it? Emotions, how they felt at the time, right? Maybe they felt doubt, fear, indecision, anxiety. But what leads to those emotions is what we think consistently, what we believe is true, our beliefs. So your beliefs are critical. So while I will tell you that there are a lot of people out there who talk about mental conditioning and mental training and don't give you any tangible ways to do it and don't implement it themselves and can't tell you what a mental conditioning workout looks like, it is absolutely important. So I will not be downplaying the importance of mental conditioning because that's what this is all about. That's what the I'm not you brand is all about. It's focusing on the mindset that it takes in order to dominate in your sport and get the results. All right. And so I want to show you in this first part of the series of this mental conditioning training series. I want to define for you what mental conditioning is. And the different types, the four elements the four types of mental conditioning, all right? And I'm going to break it down very, very clearly. You should expect to be very, very clear about what mental conditioning is and what it looks like on a consistent basis for you so it can remove a lot of that doubt and security. I'll tell you one of the things that's really true for me, honestly. Sometimes we can be doing the right thing, right? But sometimes we do the right thing, but we don't know if it's the right thing. And that indecision leads us to not do the thing as consistently, not as deliberately. It leads us to not do that because we're not sure if we're, if we're doing it right. You're going to know whether or not you're doing it right after this. All right. So you with me? This is one. This is this. Is, I mean, I want you to compare this to like math class. All right. Like take out your pen and paper, write this down because I'm, I'm defining it for you. The philosophies behind it. And so this is really, really critical. All right. First, I want to define mental conditioning, and then next, I'm going to define the G-code for you and then get into those different types and what they look like, the different sort of exercises you can do in order to make sure that you got a well-rounded routine, all right? So what is mental conditioning? What is it? Mental conditioning is the process of rewiring your beliefs, all right? It's a process. And we do that by consciously engaging your mind and your mental forces for the purpose of building mental stamina, mental strength, and mental agility. I'm going to read that again, and then I'm going to define it even further. Mental conditioning is the process of rewiring your beliefs. Remember, we talked about beliefs lead to emotions, actions, results. Mental conditioning is all about rewiring your beliefs, right? 
And we do that by consciously engaging your mind, engaging your mind, like working out your mind consciously, on purpose, engaging your mind and mental forces for the purpose of building mental stamina, mental strength, and mental agility. All right. So now that you got the definition, make sure that you write it down. What is mental stamina? What is mental strength? And what is mental agility? Because again, those are words that are thrown out a lot. It's never really clearly defined for us. So let me define this for you. Okay. Number one, mental stamina. When you have stamina, when you're working out, that means you can last a long time. That means you can recover quickly. So mental stamina is all about being able to endure tough situations, quote unquote. Perform under pressure, right? So when we talk about enduring tough situations, someone who has mental stamina has the ability to go through a grueling period of being injured, right? Has the ability to be down in a game and still perform at their best. They have stamina. They can last. They can get rejected over and over, but still bounce back. They can lose several games, but still maintain a peak mindset, a peak, a peak uh, a state of mind. So that's mental stamina, all right? Now, what is mental strength? What's the difference? Well, first of all, I'll ask you, is stamina different than strength? Can someone last a long time but be kind of weak? Can someone lift the weight for, you know, bounce back and do that many sets, but they can't do a lot of weight. Absolutely. Right. So strength is the ability to move, right? The ability to like generate some power, some force. And so mental strength, as I define it, is the ability to motivate yourself to do things that are tough. So to get yourself to move, to avoid procrastination, to commit to something, it's the ability to do what must be done regardless of how it feels. Many times we're fooled by our emotions. Charlie Munger in his uh, great book, Poor Charlie's Almanac. It's a great book. Everyone should check it out. Charlie Munger is the advisor to Warren Buffett, best friend of Warren Buffett. Also, Charlie Munger is also a multi-billionaire and an extremely sharp dude. Widely considered as one of the smartest people in the world. Let's put it like this. Bill Gates called him the smartest man in the world. Bill Gates. All right. The dude is a genius, philosopher, et cetera. And he, he breaks down the 25 cognitive biases, all right? The first cognitive bias, and by cognitive biases, it means the biases that we have as human beings that get in the way a lot based on how we're wired. There are biases in our brain, all right? And the first one is the pleasure and pain bias, he calls it. We're wired to avoid pain and move towards pleasure. So a lot of times we will avoid what we deem as painful in order to get pleasure, relax, comfort, etc. Mental strength is the ability to fight that and still motivate yourself to do what's tough. So, discipline, working out in the morning, running those hill sprints, sitting down for an hour on the weekend to plan out your, your, your week. That requires mental strength, all right? And lastly is mental agility. What is mental agility? If an athlete is agile, that means he can move quickly. He's nimble. He's light on his feet. That is the ability to be flexible and nimble in tough times. And it's the willingness and an ability to adapt in order to get a result. So how quickly can you adapt? If you're in a, in a pressure situation, your mental agility will look like you being able to say, okay, this is to be able to break down mentally what's going on and identify how you need to switch strategies in order to still get the result. Notice, I'm not talking about mental conditioning like it's some, this is all designed to get you a result, all right? This is about getting you the results. This is not about just sitting down to meditate just to meditate. I'm not encouraging that you become a monk. I'm not saying you shouldn't either, if that's your end game. But I know why you're here. You're here to dominate. You're here to get results. This is a means to an end, all right? So that's critical. It's very critical for you to understand the definition of mental conditioning and be able to define what mental stamina is, mental strength, mental agility, okay? So now let me go over the G-code, all right? First, like we said, by the way, G-code is, is your belief system. Belief system. So the G-code is critical. When I interview people, when I read, I'm trying to find out what they think. What's the G-code? What's the code at which the, by which they live? So first off, mental conditioning is a process of rewiring your beliefs. 
And it's absolutely critical. Absolutely critical. We already discussed that, right? The next thing is, and we, we talked about this as well, mental conditioning is not a passive idea. It's not like the way that a lot of people describe it. Like, oh yeah, I'm just you know, mentally tough. Well, what do you do in order to be mentally tough? They can't really define that. It's not a passive idea. It's not something that's not tangible. It is actually very tangible. Mental conditioning is a very real concept and it's done by the most successful athletes at all levels. You say you want to be an Olympian, you say you want to go pro in 2017 and you're not doing some form of mental conditioning, good luck. Unless you're LeBron James, but guess what? Even LeBron James understands the value of mental conditioning. That's why he took his game to the next level. Why do you think he, they lost to the Dallas Mavericks when he was with the Heat? Mentally, he's weak. Mentally, he didn't have stamina. Mentally, he wasn't agile. So if you plan on being elite, you must condition your mind on purpose. On purpose. This means you have, to, you have to approach the mental game with the same intention, the same focus, the same amount of detail as you do the physical aspect. So many of you have physical training routines. I will ask you, what is your mental conditioning training routine? What is on the, circuit, what is on the docket today for your mental conditioning? What are you going to do to condition your mind? If you can't answer that, you need to be able to. And I'm going to be giving you some powerful tools, powerful mental conditioning workout routines in the episodes to follow, all right? The next part of your G-code is that you must include all elements of mental conditioning to have a complete regimen. To be, to be a complete athlete, you can't just lift weights. You can't just run hills. You can't just do yoga all day. You can't just eat right. You can't just focus on drinking a lot of water. You've got to have the complete package. You've got to have it all dialed in. And that is the one thing that I feel like a lot of people don't get. Like when we talk about if you want to get to the next level, aspiring Olympians, pro athletes, you want to play at the highest level, then you got to have your whole shit dialed in. You got to have it mapped out. That's a must. That's not an option. And again, I say 2017 because anything that you want to learn, like right now, I told you, I, I was on a Facebook the other day. There was an ad for Masterclass. You can get trained by Serena Williams. You can get trained by Usher Raymond. You can get trained by, I think it's Dustin Hoffman and how to act. This is what's available to people now. So it's not enough. You don't have the edge. Like, like I said, unless you're LeBron James, even if you're LeBron James, have you seen the kids coming out of high school nowadays? You got to have your whole plan dialed in if you want to succeed, if you want to dominate. That's what you said you want to do, though, right? And then lastly, I talked about this before. Mental conditioning is not an end in itself, all right? It's got to be done in conjunction with your physical training with your necessary exercises. It should be done with specific ends or goals in mind. It's not so I'm not telling you just to go start just writing in your journal just so you can act like you're cool writing in a journal. This is done in order to achieve certain ends, certain goals, all right? And once you, I, once you understand this bigger picture of what mental conditioning is, you'll start to approach these things. Maybe some of the things I've been telling you to do, you haven't been doing, but once you understand why it's important, how to make it fit into the big picture, then you're going to be much more likely to do it, all right? And that's why this is so powerful. You have to understand why. I was just talking to my kids about this the other day, teaching them about how to set goals or how to set goals, how to reach, how to get what you want. You got to understand why. If you're not following through on something, chances are you lack the knowledge. For example, someone who has a hard time not drinking coffee, just go research what big ass coffee drinks with, with you know, a fourth cup of sugar in it do to you. Once you learn about what it does to you, you'll be much more likely to not do that. It's the same idea with mental conditioning. So you might be thinking, I should start meditating. I should be reading. I should be doing this. Well, you're not doing it. And you know why? Because you don't understand. You don't have the knowledge to back it up. And this is what, is the, what this whole episode is designed to give you. All right. So now you understand the G code. You got the G code. You have, you're able to clearly define what mental conditioning is what mental stamina, strength, and agility are. Now, let me break down the four types of mental conditioning. The four classes, if you will, all right? And this is going to clear a lot up for you. Right? I spent a lot of time thinking about this, identifying you know, how to categorize this and things, and this is going to make a lot of sense to you. And especially once you start to 
we, we start to get to creating your workout routine. It's like saying, okay, we got strength, we got speed, we got power, we got flexibility. Now you can start to put together a legitimate program that's going to get you to your result, all right? So, again, you should be writing these down. And I'm, I've listed these, by the way, in the order of their importance. Now, again, these are all super important. None of them should be left out. But they are not all created equal, okay? I have to make that distinction, and I'll explain, especially after I give this first one. Number one is action-based mental conditioning, all right? So this is active. Action-based mental conditioning. These are physical actions that are done with the intent of building stamina, strength, and agility. So an example would be pushing past your comfort zone in a workout. An example would be workout finishers that I would always do when I was training, which is specific exercise designed to do after a workout is already done that are going to push you past your limits. An example would be Jerry Rice running two and a half mile sprints. An example would be Ray Allen sprinting up and down the court until he's exhausted and then proceeding to shoot free throws and then proceeding to shoot. These are conscious actions that they're taking. Like, I'm going to do this to condition my mind in the same way that your coaches probably make you run sprints afterward. These are mental conditioning exercises. They are conditioning you mentally. They are rooting out weak beliefs and installing new beliefs. Beliefs of strength, confidence, because what happens when you do those things? You build confidence. When you overcome challenges, you build more confidence. This is critical. You can write in your journal all day, but if you're not acting, if you're not actively putting yourself in situations to test yourself, to test your limits, specifically, almost as if you're a you're, uh, test, deliberately making challenges for yourself. My mentor, Mark Devine. Best-selling author, two books, you got to check them out, Unbeatable Mind, Way of the Seal. He talks about this all the time. Putting yourself, I went to uh, San Diego to visit and we, I did a yoga class with him. And um, his yoga class is not your traditional yoga, by the way. But it was funny because we're doing this, this yoga, and he's like incorporating all these real, like active moves in it. Like, he's like kicks and punches and push-ups and burpees in yoga. And he'll say, okay, we got 50 of these like special little kicks, right? We'll do 50. And I'm like breathing hella hard, sweating. And he's like, 10 more. And I'm like, hold up, 10 more. I'm like, all right. <laughs> that was 60, but all right. And then he's like, five more. And he's like, three more. It's like five more, 10 more. And he keeps going. Why is he doing this? This Navy SEAL, this guy who understands the importance of your mental conditioning. He's pushing you. This is action-based mental conditioning. He's physically pushing you to challenge you to see if you can push past your limits. Because when you push past your comforts, you push past your limits, you gain confidence. You gain more stamina. You gain more strength. You gain more mental agility because you, you trust yourself more in times of pressure. All right? So it's important that you put yourself in situations that scare you, that give you anxiety, that you don't feel like you're ready for. And I'm not suggesting that you be reckless, but here's the reality. Most of you are not in the, in running the, the risk of being reckless, trust me. Much of what we're scared of is not anything to be scared of. Even things like quitting your job, things like starting your own business. It is not, like, we live in America, all right? What's the worst that's going to happen? You'll be homeless? Ask yourself, will you really be homeless? And what's so bad with being homeless? Will you bounce back? Is there welfare? Is there libraries? <laughs> Just think of whatever it is you're scared of. It's not actually that bad, quite honestly. So action-based mental conditioning means pushing past your comfort zones, taking physical actions that are done with the intent of building the stamina, building the strength, building the agility. This is most critical, most critical, most critical. You must do action-based mental conditioning, all right? Second type of mental conditioning is written-based mental conditioning. This is also active, it's done consciously, but it's written. So these are written exercises, usually done in solitary. You can do them with other like-minded individuals, but it's for the purpose of gaining awareness and establishing new thought patterns. You can also do this to plan as well. Planning, I consider planning mental conditioning, because what are you doing when you're planning? You're thinking of potential events that can happen. You're mapping out your course. And is it rewiring your beliefs? Absolutely, because what happens when you lay out a plan? You gain more confidence, you have more clarity. 
Written-based mental conditioning is critical, and I do this a lot. Every morning, night, before I work, I have journals stacked, filled with writing. You must write. Writing is a powerful thing. Writing links. I mean, I'm not going to get into detail. There's a book I read. I can't remember what it's called. And a lot of studies that are done about the power of writing your goals and, and what writing does. It inscribes your subconscious. Powerful. You must be doing some form of written-based mental conditioning. This, this includes journaling, other exercises. I've given out several exercises over the course of these, what are we at, like 150-plus episodes. Basically, when you're, like, you have to decide what you want to think, all right? That's the reality. If I can describe mental conditioning even more simply, it's simply deciding what to think and then conditioning those, those, those beliefs, those thoughts, conditioning them. And how do we condition them? We went one, one action-based mental conditioning, right? And then we're on two, written-based. So what I'm going to be doing over the course of this series is giving you some very powerful, very effective written-based mental conditioning exercises that you're going to incorporate into your routine. And again, I'm going to show you how to create your own mental conditioning routine, and I'm going to create one for you as well. It's going to be very powerful, help supplement what you're doing physically, and help just round you out, take you to the next level, all right? The third type of mental conditioning are mental meditations and visualizations, all right? This is also active in that it's very conscious. So visualizations, meditations, breathing exercises, usually done alone, designed to influence the subconscious mind, all right? Also to help you increase your focus, reduce anxiety, and promote feelings of calm and poise. That's what the, these do. Again, I've given you several of these as well, and I'm going to provide one in the upcoming, in the upcoming episodes uh, in this series as well. A powerful pregame visualization that is freaking awesome. And I, I have people email me all the time and tell me I had a, I had a D1, D1 women's basketball coach tell me that her whole team uses the, the pregame visualization. I think it was episode 13. I have people tell me all the time how they replay that over and over. This new one that I'm going to give you guys in the next couple episodes is extremely powerful, um, very strategic in how I set it up, and you're going to be very, very effective and evokes a lot of emotion. It's powerful. You guys are going to love it. So to that coach I mentioned, you're going to love this one as well. All right. So mental meditations, visualizations. Again, these influence your subconscious. They influence your subconscious mind. The subconscious mind cannot tell the difference between what's real and imagined. There's a great book called The Inner Game of Tennis. I believe that everyone, every athlete should read. That's extremely uh, practical and very well written in how they describe the subconscious mind. But let me describe it like this. The subconscious mind is, imagine the subconscious mind is the ocean. The conscious mind is a boat in the ocean. The subconscious mind is pure energy that must be harnessed by the conscious mind, which decides. The conscious mind is the one who rationalizes, makes decisions, you know, points to new directions, evaluates. Subconscious mind is emotion. Sometimes it's, it feels like it's outside of our control. It's a lot more powerful than our conscious mind. But what we have to do is harness it and influence it. And you do that through meditating, visualizing actively, all right? Using all the five senses. This is a skill. Again, I've created episodes on this, but I'm going to talk more about this in the episodes to come as well. The power of visualization. Very, very powerful. But notice, I'm not one of those guys who's going to sit up here and tell you that you're going to visualize your way into success. What you are going to visualize your way into is a new way of thinking, is a new way of feeling, and a new way of performing. You will. If you do it consistently and if you practice, if you train consciously, and if you have a mental conditioning routine that is set up in a complete way, all right? So that's number three. Lastly, I call it assimilation mental conditioning. It's more passive. So this is reading, reading, watching videos, watching videos of people that you admire, sort of passively uh, through osmosis, soaking up game, reading being around mentors, getting feedback and advice. This can also be considered or I is considered mental conditioning because does it help rewire your beliefs? Being around different people, is that going to help rewire your beliefs? Absolutely. Absolutely. Reading. Why do you think I talk about reading all the time, how important it is? Absolutely, it helps influence your beliefs. There are several books that have dramatically influenced the way that I think 
and what I now do. Again, I don't just read so I can say that I read and hold on to my current way of thinking. I read for the sake of growing, and growing requires the rewiring of your brain. Just like building muscle requires the breaking down and rebuilding of your muscle. You must be flexible. You must do this with the end in mind, all right? So there's four types. Again, action-based mental conditioning, written-based mental conditioning, mental meditations and visualizations, and lastly, assimilation mental conditioning. Four types. Now you know you, you have a very thorough understanding. You probably can explain mental conditioning a lot better than most sports psychologists can with what I just laid out for you. You have the definition. You know how you define stamina, strength, and agility as a result or as it relates to mental. You have the G-code, the mindset behind mental conditioning, and you have a major key, which is the idea that mental conditioning is not an end in itself, right? It's a means to an end, and your end is to get the results. That's going to get, I mean, that's going to blow the top. I mean, that's that right there, if you can hold on to that idea right there, you're going to go far because a lot of people don't get that. A lot of people like to just do for the sake of looking a certain way. No, you do in order to get the result. All right. That's a major key. So what I want you to do now is I want you to start thinking about what areas are you lacking the most in? Are you someone who puts yourself in a, under a lot of stress and challenges in order to grow consciously? Are you someone who does a ton of journaling but doesn't do anything about it? Are you someone who has no idea how to visualize and, and, and experiences a lot of anxiety because you don't know how to calm your mind? Are you someone who's locked in a cage all day and doesn't get around under other mentors, other books, watch videos? Don't get feedback and advice. So identify where you're the weakest out of all these four. Where are the holes in your routine? Maybe you're like the equivalent of somebody who's, you know, squatting all day, has huge thighs, but they got no biceps or they lack flexibility or they can't run a mile without passing out. Where are you weak at? All right. Identify those because on the next episode, I'm going to be start. I'm, I'm going to help you lay out your mental conditioning routine. All right. It's going to be very powerful. So again, I hope you took notes, listen to this over again and be excited because you're going to have a complete routine and I don't care what sports you play. I don't care what line of work you're in. You absolutely, if you want to take your results to the next level, you've got to have all some aspects of all four of these in your mental conditioning routine. You must have it. All right. Action alone is not enough. The right types of action and what influences the right type of action is your beliefs, your mindset, your emotions. And you can very deliberately and very consciously affect those things through what I've just laid out and what you're going to find out in the episodes to come. All right. So hope you enjoyed this episode. Make sure you share it with your peoples. If you have friends, you have people who you know can benefit from the information I lay out on this podcast, not on just, just this episode, but on the podcast in general. I tell people, and this is not to sound arrogant, honestly, like if you are an athlete that's looking to take your game to the next level, I believe you would be an idiot if you didn't listen to this podcast because that's how valuable it is. That's how much time and energy I put into it. That's how much knowledge is laced throughout these interviews, throughout these, these episodes. And I'm teaching you what I learned through experience through what I have done, through what I have not done, through my time with the world's greatest athletes. This is powerful, right? I take that serious. So make sure you share it. The words got to get out. People got to know this. I want you to think about someone right now who you believe can dramatically benefit from this information. Share this with them, all right? Talk soon. I look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Let's go. Thank you for tuning in to the Sports Motivation Podcast. Make sure if you dig in the podcast, go and subscribe so you can always get the latest episodes. I come out with a new episode twice a week on Tuesday and Friday at 3 a.m. Eastern. And make sure you go ahead and rate it and leave me a good review. As always, I appreciate you tuning in and I'll talk to you soon. Much love.
Yo, one of the most common questions I get from athletes all the time is this. What is the single best thing I can do to reach my goals? How can I set myself apart from everybody else? Obviously, there are a lot of things, but the one thing that's helped set me apart was having a coach, a mentor, someone to show me the right strategies and how I need to do things specifically to achieve my results. So you could try to do it on your own, but you'll end up making many mistakes that could have been avoided if you had someone guiding you and coaching you along the way. 99% of athletes in the world have, have expert coaches to show them the things that they can't see. If you want to work with me as your coach, I want you to go to imnotyou.com forward slash SRC and learn more and sign up for a free coaching session. I'll give you 60 minutes of my time for free and I can teach you some dynamic strategies plus show you how you can secure me as your sports results coach. All I ask is that you fit in this criteria. You're serious about your sport, you're willing to invest the time and money, and you have clear goals of taking your game to the next level or some sort of specific results you want to achieve. This is definitely not for everyone and I have very limited spots available for this. So. If this applies to you, I want you to take action. Go to imnotyou.com forward slash SRC, and I guarantee you're going to take your game and your career to the next level.